Well, thank you, Jane. I'm, I'm not sure whether to follow that. Um, my presentation is somewhat organic, which uh, you may be a bit unusual for somebody who's head of UX at a bank. Uh, you might be expecting something super corporate, but um, I thought long and hard about who the audience might be. And actually, I uh, thought probably the best thing I could do is draw upon some real world experiences of some of the bigger projects I've done and how they start to actually break down. And, uh, well, you'll see. Um, so, this is kind of almost like a it is about strategy, it's almost anti strategy. Um, so, without further ado, oh, well, before I start, there's one thing. Um, so, a lot of the, what I'm about to talk about is the real life. Uh, uh, Perhaps got hitting the ground with new projects and working out what to do. If you work for an agency, you kind of have a head start because you're going to be hired or um, uh, brought into an organisation almost with an understanding you do a certain thing. You have a methodology. People recognise that. You'd hope anyway. So a lot of this is actually about possibly um, um, entering an organisation they don't know what to expect. So without further ado, oh, I just did this. Before we start though, um, just a little bit about me, and I'll keep this brief and I'll try not to be egotistical, it does have a purpose in a while. So, um, so for the past 10 years I've been very lucky, I've worked uh, in lots and lots of projects uh, across the world. I've, I've worked at Gulfstream in Savannah, Lego in um, Malmo, um, so I was like here in Malmo, Lego in Boston, but all over the place. Um, UX is a really wonderful uh, industry to be in. Um, but how I started off, and again, this does have relevance later. Back in the 80s, back when I was at school, I was just obsessed with the digital design and graphics, and I did uh, graphics for computer games. Um, I made quite a lot of money, believe it or not, doing these kind of things, and lost it all in shares before I was 16. Um, onto that, I actually went to college. Uh, our college tried to do digital work, digital design. It wasn't really a thing back then, so I left college thinking, oh, fantastic, I've got skills. Could I find a job? No. I ended up doing lots of stuff like this, um, which is basically a, a proposal for how a touchscreen might work. This was in the early 90s. Uh, couldn't get anything. Um, of course, 20 years later, we have this. Uh, I'm not calling myself present or anything, but, but, but the jobs just weren't there. Um, I ended up finding a job as a digital designer. Um, then the industry started to form around me. Um, and ended up getting a role in, well, Ogilvy, where I was working with interactive TV. So I'm about to share with you the height of an interactive solution around the uh, year 2000. Ready? Ta-da! So this was interactive TV back in the day. It did things that the internet couldn't, believe it or not. Um, so anyway, I kind of dawdled around in the industry before finally getting a job at Microsoft. Um, this is back 2005, and this is a formal UX job. And so I um, arrived at Microsoft, we had individual contributors, as Jane just mentioned, and managers, and that was very much the thing about a career path. Um, we did training about how to sell UX as a concept and a service to various uh, uh, of your clients. And to be honest, I don't remember too much about it. I was there for four years, and the one thing that really sticks with me is this. I was trying to work out on how to do something. I'm not particularly technically minded, actually. Um, I was trying to work out how to do a thing, how it might actually be designed and developed. And uh, a tech lead said to me, this isn't your job. What you need to do is arrive at the best solution you can. And we have good people at Microsoft to actually implement that. Um, and that was very powerful, um, and in fact it, it was very liberating. It was, um, I don't need to fully understand the solution. Um, triage is super important, but, but really understand your role. It doesn't have to be work out how to do stuff. Um, after Microsoft, um, it's about four years there, um, when you join the referral to this, putting the chip in, and it starts to take over your life a bit. And you think, oh, I've got lots of good projects, I sort of know what to do now. I've got a methodology, I know how it all works. And I decided to step out and go into contracting. Um, various jobs, one of the first ones at Lloyds Bank. Um, <clears throat> so I didn't realize at the time how lucky I was, um, but I was offered an opportunity to work on an FX foreign exchange platform. Um, I didn't know anything about it. I managed to lock my way in. Um, I came up with a proposal for, for a concept work for an FX platform, I ended up working on it for 18 months. Um, and this is, this is where the theme of this talk goes in. Um, I managed to get in there, establish a methodology, uh, a work with agencies to deliver this stuff. But um, when starting out, uh, I was working with my main client and I started to deliver wireframes, articulated a design solution and uh, as work as quickly as I could. And his comment to me was, I don't want any of that box shit. 
So <laughs> I found myself um, um, uh, having to do high fidelity designs, uh, very arduous, but the point being it was successful. Um, you managed to understand the expectations of the client, you designed stuff. It did go smoothly, but, but we got there in the end. But, so you have to sort of uh, uh, manage your expectations and manage your, your, your client's expectations. I hate this phrase, but what does success look like? Now, um, I understand you guys like uh, case studies, and I'm going to do the quickest case studies you've ever seen because rather than focus on the work, which is the normal way of doing things, we're going to do a slightly reverse way of doing it. I'm going to show you the work but then actually tell you exactly what really happened and the really important decisions behind what made the work successful. So, for my sins, I worked at the Daily Mail. I was head of UX at the Daily Mail um, and worked on uh, the tablet edition of the Mail. Whatever you might think about the Daily Mail is borne out by working there. It's exactly like the paper. Um, I lasted less than a year. However, it was an interesting time. So, I'm going to speed through for a flip through this. So, Redesign of the uh, uh, Mail Plus, the, mail port, the, the, the iPad edition of the Mail. So, start off with basic wireframes. Move on to lots of design iteration. But more uh, high fidelity wireframes. Oh, now we're actually getting into interaction, interaction design. And uh, visual design executions. Marketing materials to go alongside that. And here's actually some video the material as well to, to back up the marketing materials. And finally, ta-da! So this is what it looked like. I told you it was going to be quick. Now, so that was about a six month project to launch that. So, what really happened? Um, so, let me just get my notes just to make sure I've got the names right. So, when I arrived at the mail, I didn't realise what a political place it was. Um, the mail, as you probably, or you might know, um, the editor is a guy called Paul Dacre. Um, mail Online is the most successful uh, English language newspaper site in the world, um, or it was at least. Uh, in terms of UX, it shouldn't work, it's awful, terrible. Um, and it's from a guy, by a guy called Martin Clark, or at least was, I had to check that too. Now, Paul Dacre and Martin Clark absolutely hated each other. Um, Paul Dacre's mail was, uh, well, if you know the mail, it's very down with this kind of thing, and all uproar, and the um, mail online is all titillation and side move and a sidebar of shame. Um, so they kind of opposed. Um, now Paul Dacre wanted in a digital, so he set up uh, an offshoot uh, of just a tablet edition of the, of the mail. It had its own newsroom, which is unheard of. Um, it was all because of the friction, those personalities. Um, mail Plus was run by a chap called Paul Fields. I'm just I'm suddenly wondering my naming names too much here. Anyway, Paul Fields ran Mail Plus, and he ran it like a newsroom. So we had a digital newsroom producing digital content, being run by a guy who used to produce newspapers, so he'd be walking to a front page and say, change that, move that, move that button there. So you're talking about moving fundamental design uh, uh, or navigation items around the page. We know this doesn't work. So, how to make what I just showed you successful? Let me just flip back. It was all about convincing an individual in this case, that uh, mm -hmm. we had some suggestions to make the paper better and possibly we knew things differently to him. So what we did, the wireframes were incredibly visual. We had to make suggestions in big, bold, red could be bad, green could be good. We couldn't actually be too, too uh, descriptive about these things. We literally had to design these things in a very visual, obvious way, and side them up, and leave them on his desk, and just side them away to see if he saw them later. After a few weeks of this, yeah, he started to appreciate perhaps what you were talking about. Then we got into this stuff, and this is very visible because it was good. We actually got into a corner of a newsroom. We started a new part of a newsroom. Everything was done, everyone was involved as much as they wanted to be. And the wireframes, incredibly visual and probably more simplistic than you normally would do because, again, we just really had to get across to the right audience and to the editor what we were trying to do. Um, by the time we get onto this stuff, it, it's probably more straightforward. This is a uh, um, more standard executional stuff, but, but I just wanted to point out how we got success. It was all around tailoring what we were trying to do for one particular individual in this case. And I, I told you that super quick case studies, we don't have long. Manchester United, I'm going to do the same thing now. Am, am I very echoey, by the way? Is it just being very fine? Right, um, Manchester United. 
I, I work at Manchester United in the renovation of their digital properties for about six months. I don't like football. To the eternal shame of my father, who used to play for Sussex, I never got into football. So I found myself working at Manchester United. Again, I'm going to talk about the portfolio story. Um, arrive, uh, set up a team, um, lots of iterative work, uh, personas, lots of research, going through into uh, really nicely articulated user journeys and moments of truth, getting into some interaction design, design and executions. Okay, okay, six times there. there. What really happened? I told you this was quick. One second, the names again. So, um, I was actually in Babington House with my partner and uh, son had been born about three or four weeks before, and I got a phone call. Um, I was working for a consultancy at the time, we'd, we'd won this piece of work at Manchester United. So I was on holiday and I, uh, I had to fill lots and lots of calls and I had to fly to Manchester the, the following day. Um, without going into some of the details of how that contract arrived, what we discovered when we arrived was that um, uh, the board, um, uh, the C-suite if you will, um, uh, very, very personable, avuncular, invite you out for beers after work, but um, we found out very quickly that it's a very fearful culture. Um, Manchester United, uh, you'll know this culture. Um, <laughs> is it run by the Glazers? The Glazers, right there we go, fantastic, I told you I know nothing. And they're based out of the state. And they have a reputation, if you put a foot wrong, you're out the door. So the culture was, very vulgar and very, very friendly, however, no one could make a decision uh, because they were terrified. We also found out that there was a group of people who worked there for years, were quite close-knit and outsiders, and so there's a dynamic we had to work out. Um, also, um, the digital properties they had, uh, the website and the mobile app, the website was almost 10 years old and being built upon and built upon. The mobile app was designed by a small agency at the weekend. They locked out, it worked, and it was quite popular. So they had no expectation of the way things were done. So we had to get in there and actually turn things around to start introducing a methodology where we're working. Um, oh, there was one final other thing in the mix as well. Um, the company I worked for just introduced another digital arm as well, who are competing for the work uh, based out of the US. So I arrived on site, they shipped over some people from the US and kept on talking about different methodologies. It was complicated, but the point being, we're working for clients who didn't quite know what success looked like. So, how did we deal with that? Similar kind of things, really. The first thing is about listening. Um, ooh, this is one of the first uh, huddles we had with, with, with all the senior stakeholders, and we tried to understand where they were coming from, what their expectations were. Uh, oh, by the way, this is a view out of my office window. Um, that's the football stadium, apparently. It's nothing to me. Oh, these are footballers, again, have nothing to do, I've got no idea who they are. Um, again, dream jobs for people. But, but going back to the case in point, um, so standard thing, we were very quiet, I was very quiet, I started holding a series of workshops, and we phrased the workshops around, well, we UX'd them up, but it was really around, what do you like about the current site? What don't you like? Um, what, what competitors do you like? The really important thing, though, is the forum that there's no right or wrong. Um, the post-it notes were just incredibly useful. We got people to um, uh, uh, come up with things they liked beforehand, just as discussion points. To be honest, it didn't matter. The whole point was creating a forum as a safe space for people to talk. So out of this, we had a group consensus about what's good, what's bad, and that was a way forward. And a really important thing is, nobody was responsible for saying what was good, what was bad, and nobody could be held accountable. And that gave us enough to work with. Um, from there, similar kind of thing, be visible, we set up the digital theatre of dreams, a little uh, office next to the C-suite. And yeah, it, this is in many ways theatre, you'll be very familiar with this, the, the work on walls, participation, get everyone involved. What happened next? Well, um, I think the project's still going on. Um, something in this industry you learned about years ago is um, you work on something for a period of time, you move off. Um, I built a team, segued off. Um, and sometimes you don't even see what's happened afterwards. Uh, this used to happen at Microsoft, I worked on things, and a few months later, I won awards, I didn't know, no one told me. Um, and it's actually one of the reasons why I'm a TSP bank at the moment. I wanted to uh, um, uh, work on something you can actually see the way it develops and have an influence, but apart from uh, just setting up uh, the initial phases of things. One moment.
So, uh, how much time do I have, by the way? Five. So, what does all this mean? Why have I sort of taken you in a slightly arduous ramble around my, my past history and some of these projects very quick way? Um, so, delivering a new strategy. First thing to do is about to climatize the business and understand exactly what the business wants. Is it about technology? No. Um, quick aside, um, I, I use this analogy a fair bit to myself at least. Um, but the beginning of broadcasting, uh, uh, broadcasting is synonymous with blue towers and technical stuff like this. These days it's about programming. I honestly think that delivery of digital stuff is like this at the moment. We put too much emphasis on technology. It's a vital important component of it, but we shouldn't be led by technology. Um, it's a common thing. I mean, where does UX sit? Is it marketing? Is it technology? Is it digital? Is it another thing? It's, it's not a common, but we're still working through this. But anyway, um, so is it about culture? Yeah. Is it about people? Yeah. Is it often about one person? Yeah, more often than not. So you're working in UX, but actually to achieve success, you really need to get into the psychology of who you're working for and understand who you players are. I'll mention methodology too, Jane touched on digital the double diamond. Um, methodology is kind of the same, I mean, we all have processes, um, and this one, at least used to be the foolproof one, Tim Kane was meant to be um, um, on the panel tonight, he's from the fool foolproof, but all these are basically the same, it's all about exploring, understanding a solution, really understanding the detail for it before delivering on it. So, don't get too wedded to this. Um, I just want to say, for those of you practitioners, you are an amazing industry. Um, it's a nascent nice industry still. I've been, the reason I talked about the early stuff, I've been doing this quite a long time, almost um, as long as anyone really, it's just worked exclusively in digital, and, and we're still learning as we go along. Um, but we have the opportunity to work on all sorts of projects uh, internationally. Um, I don't think uh, any other digital industry is quite so agnostic to what you work on. So you can work in financial services, advertising, pharma, whatever you like. We can transfer our skills. It's amazing. Um, your job is ultimately it's imagining stuff and making it real. Now we can talk about that. It's not. It's actually understanding the user and making stuff real. But working is an incredible thing. Um, so I guess the point I'm trying to make is. Don't be shy of tackling something new. Um, you will be out of your depth because we are still making stuff up as we go along. Um, all these methodologies are new and it's often about culture, so, so never shy from each other. You will find yourself out of your depth. But if you do, just remember to listen, adapt, your methodologies aren't set in stone, and embrace the post it though, embrace the theatre. And if it really goes to that shape and you don't know what you're doing, embrace that big project. Always keep a straight face. Don't be afraid to make it up. Um, and super quickly, because everyone always asks. <laughs> My moment of fame. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. I'm going to try to look farther back this time. Raise your hand really high if you have a question. I don't see any. Okay, then I guess you guys are all really hungry. We have pizza for you, or you're thirsty and there's beer, and I need you.